Hello and welcome to Springboard Media's Active Tips. I'm Amanda Urbanzik. Today we're going to take a look at how you can use your Promethean board in the math classroom. So Dr. Robert Marzano found that Promethean boards could be a student achievement by an average of 16 percentile points. But not every interactive whiteboard lesson is created equally. The best ways that you can use your interactive whiteboard include using research-based instructional strategies, just like you'd be teaching with a wipe off board or an overhead projector, you want to use the same best practices. He also found that one of the key aspects of your interactive whiteboard is the ability to show non-linguistic representations. Visuals, multimedia, really gives students different ways that they can view a rich variety of resources. He also found another thing that really helps increase student achievement is using the reinforcer properties to give student feedback right away. So that way the students can find out if their answer is wrong or right immediately. And then have a conversation about it with the teacher. I found these six key interactive whiteboard interactions on a blog by David Weitzel. And I really like the idea of thinking about how you can create different lessons using each of these different interactions. Because your interactive whiteboard is really about interactivity, there's many different ways that students could interact with the, with the information. Drag and drop, hide and reveal, movement or animation, color, shading and highlighting, matching or student feedback and voting. Let's take a look at how all of these can be used in your math classroom. So we're going to take a look at how you can use the text tool or the shape tool to create sorts, how you can use drag a copy, how you can use contain anything to help students take notes, how you can use revealer, and then some different ways that you can hide and reveal, how you can use handwriting recognition to create different layers on your page, and how you can create tool tips. I downloaded this flip chart from Promethean Planet. Uh, this person used graphs or screenshots of graphs as well as the equations. So a student would be doing a drag and drop or a matching where they'd have to fit these different things together. The key to this is that you want to make each of the answers its own text box because anything you put on the page can be manipulated. It can be made, it can be made bigger and it can move. So you can move this over to where it fits. Now if you want to get a little bit more sophisticated in this way, you can add containers. And containers would assign a right answer to that square. So when you move in the right answer, you hear a reward sound. If you move in the wrong answer, it bounces back. Even working without containers, you could have students come up and explain why this is the right answer, and then maybe have another student explain why it's not the right answer. Or you could use learner response devices to have someone move this over and then have people in the classroom vote if they think that's correct or not. Another way you can use the text tool to make a sort in Active Inspire for your math classroom would be to, to set up two different categories. So it's kind of like a modified Venn diagram where students would be choosing which side they think each of these goes on. Is it a rational number or an irrational number? So you could have students then move numbers that were in the wrong location to the other side. If you start out with some of the numbers already placed in different categories, you could have students defend whether they think they're in the right whether they're in the right category or whether they need to move. And here you're getting into higher level thinking skills where students are really analyzing what are the characteristics of that category and why do these numbers belong in that category or not belong in that category. Here's another example of using a text sort to help students identify similarities and differences in your math classroom. To blend the learning here, what I might do is have a worksheet with all the answers along the bottom on a worksheet and students have to match them up. Then maybe students form teams based on a key equation. And then you would use a flip chart like this to do a review at the end of a lesson to summarize which ones belong in which category. For a sort like this, you could actually use your learner response devices. So you can just grab the pen tool and label these. My handwriting is a little messy today. Then you could ask students, all right, which one belongs here? 
and do a quick express poll to let them vote. This can be a formative assessment or a review so you can see how many students in the classroom really got the lesson and are ready to create pre-algebra equations. Here the same thing is being set up but instead of with words it's with pictures. So students would be dragging each of these ones to where they fit on the lines. You can also sort things that are images where you don't have a set sort. You have students work on them in small groups explaining why they would sort them into certain groups. Maybe I would label them A, B, C, D, so it would be easier for students to describe how they were sorting them. And then students can come up to the board and move them around. These are set up to contain anything so the line goes with the graph as it moves. The great thing about all these sorts is that you could save student work for 7A or for a fourth grade class. And then you can reset the page so that it's completely back to the way it was when you first started for the next class, for fifth period class or for 7C. The next thing I want to talk about about how you can use your Promethean board and Active Inspire in your math classroom is drag a copy. Drag a copy is a really cool feature so that you can set up just one page that has some information on it that students are going to need to use over and over and over again. So to create equations here, I can see these are already set up for drag a copy because when you put the hand over it, it has a green plus. So now every time I click on this, it's going to make another copy of that. How do you set up drag a copy? Well, I'm actually going to flip into design mode for a second so we can see what this is going to look like. When you select any of these in design mode, you're going to click on the menu bar right here and you're going to hit drag a copy. Now it's set up so that every time you click on it, it's going to make another one of that. Think about this in the elementary classroom with money. If you have a flip chart where you need students to be making change, you can put one quarter, one nickel, one diamond, one penny at the bottom with drag a copy and you'll have unlimited amounts of virtual manipulatives. It doesn't work when I'm in design mode, so now when I click on one of these, it's actually going to move the whole thing. So I need to go back to presentation mode so that I can use my drag a copy. Drag a copy also works with any kind of text. If you highlight the text and you click and drag, it makes another copy of it for you. You don't have to set it up to be drag a copy. But sometimes it's hard for students to select the entire text with a highlighter instead of double clicking on it. You can also use drag a copy to create virtual manipulatives like algebra tiles. Here's another flip chart page I downloaded from Promethean Planet that uses drag a copy to create virtual algebra tiles. So each of these you can see when you click over it is going to have the hand and this is going to make another copy of this. Similarly, if you're using text, you can use that drag a copy by highlighting to separate out each part of the equation and not have to retype it. So what I did here is I clicked on 4x and I highlighted it and I brought it down so that there was a 4x underneath each part of this equation. You can also set up images to drag a copy. So this is already set up to contain anything and it's set on drag a copy. So I wouldn't have to turn the page if I wanted to make a new graph. It's actually going to go on top of the other one, so I could keep layering up graph paper on top of each other. You can also set it up so a revealer starts at the top of your page, and you can reveal each part of the equation and have students explain why that part is correct or incorrect. And you can annotate over this. You can save your revealer position if you click here and hit Save, Re save Revealer Position. The next time you come back to the page, it'll be in that position. How I got it to be on there when I first automatically started is actually in my property browser. So in property browser, underneath tools, you can set it so that it's on the revealer tool when you first turn to that page. There's nothing worse than thinking you need to cover everything up, but turning to that page and having everyone see the answer, and then quickly putting the revealer on. In the property browser on my next page, I actually wanted to check this to tools off. The next way I would take a look at using your Promethean board in your math classroom is to look at how ways that you can hide and reveal. So here I have two different layers set up 
and you can see them if I look at my object browser. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to change the transparency of this top layer. So as I make the top layer see-through, I can see the answers below it. So transparency or layering is one way that you can hide and reveal. You can also have the answer hiding behind and you pull the answer out or you could use magic ink. So this is set up exactly the same way except that this image here is on top. So I would go into the magic ink which sees through the top layer. And my magic ink is going to reveal the answer underneath for me. Here's a little bit more simplistic use. Um, I took this flip chart page that I downloaded and I covered up the answers with a blue, with a blue pen. Someone would use the eraser to reveal what the answer was. Another way you can use Active Inspire in your math classroom is to use your grid designer. I got to the grid designer by going to Edit Grid. There is a grid on every page and you could use it to line up items and align what was happening on your page, but the grid is usually invisible. When you check this visible box, the grid will show up on your page. You can set up how big you'd like the grid to be, as well as where you'd like the grid to start. When you're using your grid, you could use your pen tool to annotate over the grid. But sometimes you want exactly straight lines. This is where your pen modifiers come in. So when I have the pen tool selected, and I go to Tools in the menu bar, I can choose Pen Modifiers and pen modifiers will pop up along the side next to my toolbar. Now I can select horizontal or vertical lines and wherever I click, no matter where I move my pen, it creates a horizontal line for me. Same thing with vertical lines. Even if I move my pen all over the page, it stays vertical. You can also use actions to hide and reveal. So now when I click on sign, it pops up with some information about what sign is, cosine, and tangent. Or you click on the answer. And this way, as students were taking notes, they could be taking a guess when you first, before you click on sign, and then you reveal the answer to them and give them that immediate feedback. Here, similarly, the actions, when clicked, reveal the answers over here. Thanks for watching part one of Active Inspire in the Math Classroom. Check out part two for some more ideas and tips. Check out our website for more information about our professional development courses and workshops.